I'll be honest with you. There are three AI tools I've become so dependent on that if they disappeared tomorrow, I'd probably panic a little bit. One remembers everything for me. The other one helps me see patterns that I'd probably have trouble spotting on my own. And the third, well, it completely changed the way I research anything. Let me show you exactly why these three are absolutely non-negotiable. Hi, I'm Chantal and welcome to AI for 50 plus where I try to make AI practical and simple. Now, I've tested dozens of these AI tools over the last year. Some were impressive, uh, some were overhyped and most of them, well, I forgot all about them after a couple of days. But these three, they fundamentally changed the way I work, learn and organize my life. And the best part, they're all free to start, so you can start using them within the next 10 minutes. The first tool that I generally can't live without is ChatGPT. And let me explain why I feel it's become my external brain. So here's my problem, and you might be able to relate to all of this. I have so many ideas, thoughts, and things to remember. So for example, I'd be working on a video script, and then suddenly I remember that I need to email someone. And then while I'm drafting that email, there's this great idea for the content of a video that just appears. And while I'm jotting that down on a piece of paper, then I suddenly remember that there's some research that I need to do for yet another video. It's total mental clutter. ChatGPT has become the place where I dump everything. And I don't mean just asking it questions. I mean actually using it as a thinking partner and as a memory system. So here's how I use it daily. I get up in the morning, prepare my coffee, and then I open ChatGPT and I start having a conversation with it. And I call it Leo for Leonardo da Vinci. So I'll say, Leo, here's what I'm working on. Those are ideas for two videos and here's where I'm stuck. And then it helps me organize my thoughts, prioritize and break down complicated tasks into manageable chunks. But here's where it really gets powerful and here's why I prefer it to Claude or Gemini, which are worthy opponents. Uh, it's because it remembers our conversation history or our chat history. So if I told it last week that I'm working on a series about AI for travel and today I would tell him, so what should I cover in my next video? It already has that context. It knows what I covered in the past, in other videos. It knows my audience and what gaps I still need to fill. I also use it for brainstorming. So when I'm stuck on a video idea or a thumbnail design, I, I don't just stare at a blank page, whether it's on my computer or Canva. I'll say I'm making a video about three indispensable tools like this one today. Give me 10 title options. And then I'll look at them and say, okay, I really like number three and number seven. Can you combine them? And then we continue working together until the title feels almost perfect. And the best way for me to organize myself, say for my YouTube channel, is by using its function of projects. Let me show you. When I talk about projects as a great way to organize it, in terms of my YouTube channel, I created a whole project for AI for 50 plus. Now you see the projects are here and the chats are right below. So that's where you would find them. And if I, I clicked on AI for 50 plus, you have all of the chats that I've, that I've done for this project and each chat or thread is actually a specific video. So let me show you more in detail here. I started discussing with Leo, okay, so I have an idea and we started brainstorming ideas and doing a number of things in the chat. But then at some point I said, create for me a canvas document, which is what you're seeing here in that box. And this type of document you can edit, whereas the chat you can't. So you can edit your prompt, but you cannot edit the conversation. So I said, okay, we're pretty much advanced here. Put everything that we've discussed. First of all, let's do the outline. So an idea of what we could be saying in general for that specific video. So here is the 
I'm talking about perplexity here. So what are the pros and the cons, the pro plan versus the free plan? And after that, I said, okay, we have enough. So let's do concept brief. I'm always asking to look at what would resonate with my audience because the ultimately is, is what I want is to do something useful. So that's where uh, we talk about the uh, approach, the value proposition. We get into the metadata, which is, of course, the titles, brainstorm titles, the video description, the tags, the thumbnail. And finally, we go into script planning. It's only planning because I call it planning because it's not a real full script. I like to have the intro and the outro written, but the rest I prefer having bullet points. This is what I do for each and every video. But as you can see, I have quite a few uh, projects. If you look here, I've started some of my videos first separately, but I do have a project just on ChatGPT and testing things. I have a project on children's books. I have a project on recipes, especially my mom's, uh, but also my daughter's. <laughs> so those projects really help me put things all together. And if I'm working, for example, on a YouTube video, and I know that I've done something that was really interesting in a previous video and I wanna to refer to it, it's easy. I, I just go back to opening up the project and click on the chat where that video was. So it's really, really useful. The free version gives you access to GPT-40, which is extremely capable for most tasks. Now, I've upgraded to the plus paid version because I use it so heavily. But honestly, you can start with free and it's very powerful. If you're someone who has a million thoughts racing through your heads or who needs a bit of help organizing all your ideas or who simply wants a thinking partner 24 seven, ChatGPT is gonna become essential. So that's tool number one. Tool number two is Notebook LM from Google. And this is my visual learning lab, the place where I actually make sense of everything that I'm learning. Here's the thing about learning a new topic. There's so much information out there. You have articles, videos, courses, Reddit threads, and it's all scattered. So I'd save articles to read later. I'd bookmark videos. I take notes in different places, and then when I actually needed the information, I couldn't find it, or I couldn't remember the key points. Notebook LM solves this completely. Here's what it does. You upload your sources, up to 50 of them, PDFs, uh, website links, articles, uh, video, uh, YouTube video links, your own notes, whatever, and it creates an intelligent notebook that can actually help you make sense and visualize your content. Let me show you a real example. So here we are in a Notebook LM and I want to share one of my notebooks, my Golden Thread Notebook, and that's all about these incredible women that did amazing things later in life. So I use it as inspiration. And as you can see, I've, I uploaded quite a number of sources here and of course it came up with a, a very good summary, but then I asked it to do a mind map that I want to share with you. And I will go just to open it up just a bit more so that you have a, an idea. Reinvention and late blooming, which was the, the main topic that I want to look at. So it gives you this beautiful visual web that really helps you to connect the dots and to see the patterns. And I'm pretty sure I would have completely missed the patterns if I had just re read everything separately. So that's a very, for this type of a project, it's a very interesting way to visualize what you're learning and what you're working on. Uh, so let me get out of this one. And then because it's a historical uh, project, of course, doing a timeline made a lot of sense. So I asked it to do a timeline and it starts in 1804 and it goes to uh, 2025, I believe. Uh, yes, sorry, here we go, uh, 2025. And then it gives you a cast of character, which is all of these women uh, with a, a summary of what they did of note. But if, if I didn't have this timeline, I would, have, I would not have seen the connections between these women and I would not have seen 
uh, for example, what was happening in the world when something important was happening to one of these women. So just as an example, if you look at 1993, for example, right here. Okay. So in 1993, Toni Morrison became the first African-American woman to win the Nobel Prize in Literature at 62. And when Gary Matai received the Edinburgh Medal and the Jane Addams International Women's Leadership Award at the same time. So I, I couldn't help but wonder, like, what conversation they could have had had they met. So I don't know if they did meet. I checked, but there's no record of it, so probably not. But it would have been awesome to see what they would have discussed and, I mean, how much they shared in terms of their life experience. So this type of timeline, to me, brings history to life in a way that just reading never could. The free version gives you unlimited notebooks, and I've been using it for months, and it's more than enough. The uh, timeline and map, uh, mind map features are built right in at no extra cost. So if you're someone who consumes lots of information but likes to connect the dots, or um, you learn better when you can see the big picture and the relationship between ideas, Notebook LM is going to transform the way you learn. So that's the second tool. The third tool, and this is the one that completely changed the way I research anything, is perplexity. So think of it as if Google and ChatGPT had a baby, and that baby was obsessed with giving you accurate information with sources. Here's why I use perplexity every single day. When I research a topic, I don't want just any answer. I want accurate information with sources that I can verify, and I want it fast. Traditional Google searches, you get a bunch of blue links and you click through each and, each and every one of them. You read through the ads and the fluff to actually get to the information. And half the time, the articles contradict themselves. It's exhausting. ChatGPT is amazing for brainstorming and conversation, as we've seen, but it doesn't always give the sources. And sometimes it can be confidently wrong with factual information. Perplexity gives me the best of both worlds. I ask a question and within seconds, it gives me a comprehensive answer with clickable sources for every claim it makes. Let me give you a real example of what I'm working on right now. So here we are in Perplexity and what I ask Perplexity actually is to compare the functionalities between Perplexity, Perplexity's Comet, and OpenAI's Atlas browser. And it did a pretty good job of actually explaining a paragraph on each of them. And then I'm just gonna flip through here, but I asked them to do a feature-by-feature -feature comparison. And that was interesting as well. It gives a, a lot of information. And I asked a number of uh, follow-up questions like uh, concrete task examples where Comet outperforms perplexity. I didn't ask the vice versa, and I didn't go with Atlas compared to the other two, which would be good. And then what is best for research, writing, or browsing automation? So perplexity says it's the best for research and then Comet for writing and Atlas for browsing automation. We're gonna to have to, to check that. One of the concerns for Comet and Atlas is privacy. So uh, started looking at that. We're gonna to have to dig a bit deeper and which one integrates better in existing workflows. Had I done this through Google, I would have opened dozens of tabs, read a lot of long articles, tried to summarize everything, do some like my own tables, and it would have it would have taken me a lot of time. With perplexity, it took me, I don't think it took me more than 15 minutes. And I have maybe not comprehensive yet, but a fairly good understanding of the three and how they compare to each other. I did ask the same question about the functionalities of the three, also to Comet and to Atlas, and I'm using both of them uh, now. So I'll report back in a future video as to whether either one of them or both of them can replace my beloved perplexity. Now for perplexity, I use the free version, and for most people, that's plenty. The paid version does allow for unlimited pro searches and some extra features, but you really can start with free. So those are my three non-negotiables. ChatGPT, my external brain, 
for organizing my thoughts and being my thinking partner, Notebook LM, my visual learning lab for visualizing connections and seeing the big picture, Perplexity, my research hub for fast and accurate research with sources. So each one of them resolves a specific problem and I can't live with any of those in that trio. Now, I wanna hear from you. Is there an AI tool that you can't live without that maybe I don't know about? Drop a comment. I read each and every one of them and I'm always on the lookout for new tools to test and to share. Uh, if you want to learn more about these tools, check out this playlist. And thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.